Good evening. My name is Michelle Krasowski, Librarian Specialist in Support of Adult Services for Contra Costa County Library. On behalf of Contra Costa County Library, I want to welcome you to tonight's forum. We have worked closely with the West County League of Women Voters, the County Elections Department, and CCTV to bring this program to our community. It will stream live on Facebook and will be available online after the program on the Library and County Elections Department websites, as well as the League's Voters Edge website. Please join me in welcoming our moderator for this evening, Cheryl Chambers from the West County League of Women Voters. Ms. Chambers is a member of the nonpartisan West County League of Women Voters. She is a graduate of JFK Law School and is currently serving on the board of the Flight Deck Ragged Wing Ensemble in Oakland. Cheryl, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. We will start with an opening statement from our candidates, and we'll start with Ms. Xavier. You have two minutes. Welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. I have lived in San Pablo for almost 30 years. I'm very involved in this city. I've been on the Planning Commission for five years, and I've been chair for three years. Um, on the Planning Commission, I have learned a good share of what it takes to uh, be involved in city uh, events. And also, I feel that I'm really well experienced to be on the City Council because of the Planning Commission. I also was on the San Pablo Redevelopment Successor Agency Oversight Board for three years. That board was just dissolved by the state and the uh, county has taken it over. I was appointed to be on that board to take John Joya, the county supervisor, John Joya's seat. I'm chair of the San Pablo Committee on Aging and I also am on the Senior Center Advisory Board. I'm a senior assembly member in the California Senior Legislature, and I'm on the County Advisory Council on Aging, so I do a lot for seniors. I'm also on the Contra Costa County Hazardous Materials Commission, and on the Contra Costa Transportation Authority Paratransit Coordinating Council. I'm on the Lao Family Community Development Board of Directors as treasurer, and I feel that all of these commissions, councils, and boards that I've been on have well prepared me to be on city council. I hope that I get your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Morris. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the, uh, the League for putting on this event tonight. And I was excited about being here as I am excited about my city. When I first came to town, in 1996, I think Dan Bornstein said it in the newspaper, my quote have said, this was a shoot 'em up town. There were open gunfights still on the street. And I said, well, the only reason I moved here is because I could afford a home. But throughout my life, I have set aside time to serve my community. And that came from my parents. My father was a judge, my mother was very, very involved in her, in her community. And it sort of rubbed off on me. My brother had gone by this time, and he was off on a career overseas. And I stayed and dug my heels in. So San Pablo has, I've been good to it, and it's been good to me. I'm sir, running for my fifth term on city council. And I drive around, around town these days and look at and point to things uh, and mentally, and I say to myself, I was a part of that, I did that, I was influencing that, and da 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 da, all over town. And the most important one actually was the, what is now Plaza San Pablo, uh, it used to be Circle S Mobile Home Park. That was me pushing for getting more land that we could do things. I do serve on some very, very important committees and boards, one of them being the League of California Cities. Public Safety Committee, the East Bay Regional Co Communications System Authority Board, and this is all public safety oriented. My goal is to keep this city and make it even better in the public safety and security area. We've done astonishingly well in reducing crime 
and keeping the, thank you. Thank you. Our first question for the evening goes to Ms. Xavier. What do you see as your number one priority when you are elected? Well, actually, I have a lot of priorities, and it's kind of hard to decide which one is number one. I think economic development is very important. We rely basically on the casino for our income, and we need to develop other sources of income, have more um, business-oriented, uh, small businesses, possibly light industry, and um, just other places to get income in, in case there comes a time when we can't depend on the casino anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morris. Well, I've already mentioned one, which is public safety. The, the other is that uh, economically we're doing very well. Our home prices are up. Our crime is down. The, there's so many elements now which uh, didn't exist years ago. And these are because of the policies we've set, myself and my colleagues, over the years. And my feeling is that, as they say, I ain't done yet. So I'm, uh, I'm running again to keep the policies in place we have. We set new ones. We have a strategic priority plan in place. It's a fluid document which, starting with all the, the things that the, all the items that the city council members have put on there, and sometimes it's, it's as high as 300, um, 300 items. This city has come an awful long way in a very short period of time, and I'm really, really pleased that Rita Xavier has uh, stepped up and decided to run for city council with, in, in light of Hennebeth Calloway retiring. I'm excited about my city. I'm here to stay. I'm a part of it, and it's a part of me. So I, will, I plan on getting, getting elected, and I appreciate the, the voting people in this room voting for me and Rita. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question. What are the citizens of San Pablo telling you they want their money spent on? Start with you, Ms. Xavier. Um, well, one of the things that's been brought to my attention, well, not I, it was already part of my attention, but that's been mentioned to me when I've been out talking to residents, is they're still upset that we don't have a hospital. It's really important that they figure, we figure out some way to get some kind of emergency services that goes above what we already have with the West County Health Center and Lifelong. We need more. And that is one of the top priorities with the people that I've spoken to. That's been brought up the most. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris. Right at the top of the list is public safety. Without it, the city doesn't function very well. We have one of the most, the highest number of activities in San Pablo to keep kids off the streets and into activities. And I think the school board should take a look at that too, is some of the, the after school programs, which are Measure Q, which a lot of those funds go to activities for our youth. I'm excited about the fact that our seniors are now, uh, we're just refurbishing our senior center. We said we have one of the finest senior centers in the area. So what our biannual surveys tell us is that it's public safety, it's youth programs, which means a lot of the recreation programs I'm speaking about. We have the, we have the best anywhere. Our city does more in terms of uh, in terms of activities of any kind, and my my goal is to continue that. But and I keep harping on public safety, but public safety is is it. We have a premier police department. Mm -hmm. They're all professional. They're extremely well trained, and this is what the public has said in our surveys that this is one of the most important things to them. 
our neighborhoods are safer, our streets are safer, and people feel a lot better about living in San Pablo. It is a great place to live. We're a small city, two and a half square miles, 29,000 people, and in there, we do very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question. How can the city of San Pablo attract new for-profit businesses and incentivize them? We'll start with you, Mr. Morris. Ten years ago, I suggested that we start a, our own, something like the Chamber of Commerce, a visitor's bureau, and that morphed into the Economic Development Corporation, the Economic Development Corporation, or fondly known as EDC, have programs to attract businesses and training of employees within our city. We, as a city, have active, uh, active communications with other from businesses from the outside to, to come in and help, help San Paolo not be so dependent on the income from our casino. I've harped on this for years. We uh, are lucky enough to have uh, balanced our budget for 10 years now. Uh, three two-year budgets, and last year we passed a four-year budget. This is incredible. And the businesses look at that. When they're looking at a city, they're looking at its financial health. And the health of the city is uh, extremely important to uh, us on city council and our city staff and everybody that works, works with the city. Businesses are coming to, to the city, for-profit businesses. And that was my whole point about uh, dis dissolution of the surplus mobile home park. So it would allow us to have for-profit businesses in the area and come in and be a part of that. I'm very excited about what's happening in, in that property now. We built the, we sold property to the county. We're building a new uh, city hall. We just built a new WIC building, the Women, Infants, and Children building, brand new library and also there's be a housing element there too. But still, we're, we don't have anywhere to build otherwise uh, in the city. So we're gonna have to be very, very creative in where we can put these businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Xavier. Well, as um, Paul said, our Economic Development Corporation is, has been very successful I've been quite involved with them for all the years they've been in existence. And actually, Paul and I both went to Denver in uh, June of 2014 and helped our city win the All-America <coughs> City Award, which also is supposed to attract businesses, we're hoping. And um, the EDC was a part of that group, too, so it went. Um, we don't have the huge amount of empty storefronts that some of our surrounding cities have. There are very, very few vacant buildings. In fact, the one largest vacant building is um, over a grocery store, and we have no control over that because they own another huge grocery store in town and won't let anybody else into that building. Um, we are all, you know, we still talk about trying to find interesting new small businesses, small retail. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question. How can the city of San Pablo replace retail sales tax revenue losses due to the changing shopping habits of shoppers? And I'll start with you, Ms. Xavier. I don't think that big box stores are the answer. I think, um, I mean, some, a, a lot of people do like to shop big box stores, but there are also people who like to shop the smaller businesses of a, a variety of more like boutique businesses or mom and pop stores. Um, I, in my neighborhood where I live, there are several mom and pop stores and they're busy all the time. Other than that, I don't really have any other suggestions. Thank right, you. thank you. Mr. Morris. As uh, Rita pointed out earlier, 
we have you know one company which is Save Mart that owns the old uh, Albertsons okay. supermarket, and it's under their control. And she also said that in other cities like Pinal, Richmond have these big stores and big super big malls. We don't need those. We don't have the room. It's only a short driving distance. All the stores, all the businesses in San Pablo are doing very well. You'll notice that a lot of them have been around quite some time. Mm -hmm. Company like Rock and Crawfish, a restaurant, for example, they've got other locations across the country and in Oakland. San Pablo is one of the most successful of their stores, and there's many, many stories like that in San Pablo. And that's why I'm excited. We don't need the big retail. It, most people these days, if they're, if they're uh, internet connected, they shop online. You, if, you, you, if you're careful, you shop with the companies that are out of state, and A, you don't have the shipping costs most of the time, you don't have the taxes, so why should we, why we don't need the big businesses here, big retail businesses in San Pablo, that is not what we're all about. It was tried, the El Portal Shopping Center, the International Supermarket, they all failed. And smaller stores were put in, and as Rita rightly pointed out, the mom and pop stores are doing very well, especially the grocery stores, the, the small restaurants. We've even got uh, some uh, massage places who are very, very, very successful, and they've been around for quite some time. So I'm very excited that we don't have this kind of retail in San Pablo because it is failing and we're not into failure, we're into success. Thank you. Does How that answer your question? It does, it does, <laughs> thank you both. How can the city of San Pablo utilize its close proximity to Highway 80 and create a new revenue stream? I'll start with you, Ms. Xavier. Well, actually we already are, well, supposed to be, we're going to have, um, what do you call it, the, the um, sign, I'm trying to, the digital signage. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. To rent. High definition. Um, to rent um, space on it to businesses. Um, actually, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good answer to that question. I mean, Highway 80 is a way to go someplace else. <laughs> But it also can be a way to attract people, to attract businesses, to attract tourists for some reason. You know, maybe try to figure out a way to attract more, more people to stop in and see what we're all about. Thank you. Mr. Morris. I honestly don't believe it's a factor. You know, we've just put up this beautiful H HD TV board, you know, which was one of my projects, and here we are, it's, uh, it's doing very well. It's more than paid for itself. But San Pablo is a destination. It's a destination for people that can come here to, to the casino, and I hate to say it, to gamble. Yeah. When it was first proposed years and years ago, in fact, in 1998, the, the tribal council and, and the tribal chair came to San Pablo to our city council. Like uh, Rita, I served on the planning commission for four years. And during that time, 1988, they came before the council and asked if they could uh, build, uh, actually buy the property, uh, which is now the nine and a half acres of the casino, to, for a reservation. George Miller, our congressman at the time, pushed it through Congress on a Friday night, and the rest is history. It has been some very successful, but people come here for that. And while they're here, the, the city of San Pablo does have a lot to offer, but I don't think all the people on I-80 are going somewhere, as Rita said, and we're, the, the only reason they would come to San Pablo mainly is to, is to uh, see their relatives and uh, be at the casino. So that's about it. We are, I don't think anybody, most people on I-80 are going home or going to work. So I don't think we're gonna drag people off the freeway anytime soon, but there are a few that are. That see, as Rita pointed out, see what we're all about. But we, we do have a lot to offer. We've got a lot of 
things like being a very, very safe city, low crime, and very, very success successful within ourselves. Thank you. Thank you both. I'm going to combine this question. Uh, the first part is, how should the city prioritize its budget, and how would you reset the priorities? I'll start with you, Ms. Xavier. Um, the city's doing very well with its budget. We have a great budget. The budget's been balanced, as Paul has mentioned. We have a, well, I guess you, the governor would call it a rainy day fund. And um, so I think the city for the last several years has done a very good job of prior, prioritizing the parts of the budget. I don't think that we have a problem there. Thank you. Mr. Morris. As I alluded to earlier, the uh, city of San Pablo, or the city council has its priority work plan. And that is basically the, the plan that rules our budget for the policies that we have in place. The streets of San Pablo, for example, all the, all the uh, items that are in the budget, um, no, I'm going to get off that. I'm, I'm not going to answer it that way. <laughs> what I'm going to say is years ago when uh, Mr. Gomes, uh, Joe Gomes, he was on our city council, he retired at 93, and he became an exceptional friend. And he said to me at the time, he says, I'm charging you with the responsibility of the, of the guardian of the reserves. Well, not only I've been the guardian of the reserves and stopped the city and some, some of my colleagues from spending money that we don't have, is, is to not only keep it in place, which is uh, way and above uh, 17 million now, but we've now got three levels of reserves for various reasons. And on top of that, the, the city manager's discretionary fund, which, uh, which is just that for items which uh, don't need to come before city, city council, but they have already proved in some ma manner or another. Our budget is in great shape. As uh, Rita mentioned and I mentioned before, three two-year budgets and one four-year budget. I am very excited of uh, where it is. It doesn't need to be changed, but it, it's tweaked every year. So we, we can do amendments every year on a four-year budget. But other than that, I would keep it the way it is because we've worked damn hard to get it the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we are down to our closing state. You have up to three minutes. I'm going to start with Mr. Morris since we started opening with Ms. Xavier. Mr. Morris. All right. And, uh, and I'll probably repeat myself, too, which is fine, because that's my prerogative. <laughs> I love this city. I came here as a total stranger. I didn't know what it was all about. It was, uh, I, it was less than a diamond in the rough. And I promised myself when I got appointed as president of my HOA, that I would get involved a little more. So I, I pushed for being appointed to the Planning Commission, which I eventually was. I was, I was said, uh, they said to me, well, Mr. Morris, you, you, we can't approve you right now or appoint you right now. Somebody else is ahead of you, I was told. Somebody took me aside and said that to me. I said, well, fine, I've got plenty of time. I was appointed to the Planning Commission. I was going to every single council meeting. I think I missed four. I had a better record than some of those council members. Since then, I've become an integral part of the city. I'm a fixture. I love it, uh, I'm, but I'm a moving target. Believe me, I don't sit still. I run a very su successful business, and I fit this in. I don't fit it in. I make it a priority because I'm living here and my office is here and a lot of people, my friends are here that I know and I want to make the city and keep making the city the best that can possibly be. Somebody said about that, about the country in 2016, but I'm saying it about my city. We're doing extraordinarily well. We're going to keep it up. And with the talent we have on city council, my colleagues, we'll do very well. And it's, um, I'm thrilled to be here. So God bless. Love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the league. Ms. Xavier. 
As I said um, in the beginning, I've lived in San Pablo almost 30 years. I lived at the former Circle S Mobile Home Park for 20 years. That's where, that's over there. Um, it's where our new city hall is going to be built. And since all of that time, I've been very, very involved in the city. I've attended city council meetings for, I'd say, about 15 years, starting with when they were talking about um, moving everybody out of the mobile home park. And after well, some years after that, I, as I said, got involved and was appointed to the planning commission and the, the advisory committee on aging and such. I've just been so involved with the city. And if I happen to win the election, I'm going to have to give up some of these councils and commissions I'm on. Of course you are. Especially the ones in San Pablo, because I'm not allowed to be on them. But also some of the others, there'll be a couple of things I can still keep, I guess. But I am very involved with the city, with the county, and with the state. In fact, I'm going to have to spend three days in Sacramento in, legislation, in a legislative session with a California senior legislator later because I'm a senior assembly member. And that's, like I said, three days before, or a couple of days before the election. But I have learned an awful lot with all of these commissions and committees I've been on. I have met so many people and talked to so many people. So I have a feel for what people need and the way they would like to see things go in their city and their county. Because even if you're on your city council, you still end up going to meetings that involve the whole county, all of the cities in the county, all of the cities in the state, and so on. So I do hope I win the election. And I thank the League of Women Voters for putting this on, and the library, and CCTV. And the city of San Pablo for building. <laughs> yeah, and the, yes, this is our great library. <laughs> All right, thank you both. That concludes our forum for tonight. I want to thank CCTV, Contra Costa Library, the West County League of Women Voters, and the County of Elections. I'm Cheryl Chambers. Good night. <laughs>